Last time we talked about tracking our meals so we can find out how much protein, carbs, fats we're actually eating. That's really good. And ideally where we're gonna go with this is we wanna manipulate those macros. Probably lowering the fats and the carbs to some extent, keeping the protein high to spare muscle, keeping it on our bodies and losing fat. And that's definitely a good thing. But we're not gonna rush that, right? We have one more step that we need to cover first which is making sure that the composition of the foods we're eating is at least better than usual. Somewhat close to optimized, right? This means a couple of things. If we eat more of the right foods and reduce those that are not so great, we can do a couple of things. First, we can make sure that the amount of macros we're getting, let's say 300 carbs a day, we're getting the most nutritional value for it. The most vitamins, minerals, fiber, and so on and so forth. We eat, if we were to eat all of our carbs from Twinkies, all of it is sugar and just about nothing else, right? But if we eat all our carbs from healthier sources, like foods with whole grains, then we can get a ton of really good nutrition with it too. And in addition to that, especially with quality protein sources and some of the fat stuff, the amount of muscle that you can retain is higher if the quality of intake is higher. Not only is it good for your health, but it's also good for muscle retention and health. During fat loss, it's a big deal because you're kind of stressing the immune system. And it's been shown that anytime you lower your calories for prolonged periods of time, your immune function is not as great. So people have more of a tendency to get sick when they're in a fat loss diet. And we wanna make sure that you're as healthy as possible. Not just, not just in general, but long-term, right? which is good, but also to make sure that the fat loss proceeds with as few bumps in the road as possible. In addition to that, keeping the right, the right foods keeps our hunger levels lower. If you eat mostly junk food on a fat loss diet, you can absolutely lose fat and lose weight. However, junk food is so energy dense and so delicious that if you eat like one Twinkie, you're, you're, you're gonna be like, okay, I can have five more of those, no problem. But if you ate like five apples, which probably has just about as much calories as the one Twinkie, then you're like, I can't even eat the last two. Same macro, same calories, and all of a sudden, you have no problem getting full. Versus you're kind of hungry after with the Twinkies. This is a big deal. Paper, the macros have similar effects. But if some of the foods make you less hungry than others, your chance of compliance on the diet is much better if you're not hungry, right? Like the number one reason people fall off the wagon with their plan is because they get hungry and eat foods that are tasty. But if you're already eating foods that don't make you that hungry, you can have a pretty good calorie deficit and lose a lot of fat, no harm. A lot of these foods can allow you to experience higher energy levels. And that's really good because in a fat loss diet, energy is not gonna be that great anyways, because you're going to be in a high pole caloric condition. And that would bring down the amount of energy you have, right? You'll tend to slow down. And not only is it annoying because you burn fewer calories as you slow down, but you have kids, you have work, you have other stuff. So you would like to have as much energy as possible. If you eat more of the right kinds of foods and fewer of the other foods that aren't as great, you get higher energy. For those reasons, we gotta focus on the food composition. Food quality is a really, really good idea here. And we need to get that sorted out really before we put anything else in place with fine tuning the macros. For protein sources, a good idea for most, not necessarily all, but for most of your protein sources to come from some kind of lean meats, lean dairy products, and or higher quality vegan protein sources. For carbs, veggies, really good idea. Fresher, the better. Fruits, same thing. Fresher, the better. Whole grains, including whole grain breads. Really great idea that your carbs come from those sources. And for fat sources, if we're adding fats to your meals, we will be, especially early on in the plan. Later on, if you're like gonna do this super strict and hard, you, you, you have to create such a big deficit that they end up getting so few fats in your diet that it just comes from trace fats from meats and grains. But a lot of folks, their fat intake would be considerably, especially at the start of the, the diet, higher. But 
if you're if you're adding fats to your meals, it's probably best to add fats that are mostly monounsaturated fatty acids. They tend to be some of the best for your health. And there's even some, you know, decent literature to say that they promote fat loss and help you retain muscle better. Avoid canola oil, nuts, nut butters, avocados, really good idea and really awesome. And they help support your performance. They help support your energy levels and they support your health as well. And of course, your fat loss diet journey. Here's the deal. We have macros down. We're tracking those and we're going to do that throughout this process. And now we want to start to tinker with your diet to replace, you know, let's say a slice of pizza with healthier sources like lean steak, brown rice, veggies, dab of avocado or something like that. Now, let's say you have five slices of pizza in a day. Maybe take four of those out, do healthier options and have one slice, something like that, at least at the start more healthy food, less junk food, but still trying to hit the same macros as, as the last two weeks. Now, what you'll find is probably you won't eat as much as you did before because it's much harder to eat healthy food than junk food. <laughs> junk food is the easiest thing in the world to eat. So just try to eat the same macros as normal as you did the last two weeks before you started eating healthier. And if you can't eat them, go under your, your macro numbers, but don't go over. Just hit them or go under. And then next week, we'll talk about how to alter those macros. Coach Dwayne here. Don't tell me about what you're going to do. Your actions, they're going to show true. Let's get ready to train, y'all.